last time on Dice Funk. Yeah, you're you're reviving an undead character. You don't really know what will happen. This is uh, a little unprecedented uh, in the history of vibe checking. And uh, there's uh, maybe a lot potentially right on this, I think, uh, for Stranger as well. Yeah, uh, he has a lot of questions here um, on what exactly would potentially come back uh, if you put the, this meat into the, the the big underwater pits or what have you. Um, uh-huh. Is it gonna be is it gonna be Pofo the Bodak? Is it gonna be Pofo the original guy? Is it gonna be something <laughs> else entirely? Maybe both. <laughs> it could be both. We don't know. You know, I never really thought much about my sword because I, I don't think of myself as a swordsman. I'm a writer, but I guess I'm a warrior for the tree now. I'm kind of like a knight of the banyan. And so I think I have to give my sword a cool name. I think I'm going to call it Fracture. F- fuck, I should have listened to you. I am so sorry. That was the stu- I, that was, I am so stupid. I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. I am- I am just so- I, I, I am not used to the whole fighting thing. I don't want to- I don't want to fight people when I feel like it doesn't feel like you should be doing it, but like- <laughs> Just, uh, like, inarticulate rambling at a certain point. <laughs> So we have a 12 from Stranger, and Lillian is using her special crit to crit on this, so you are absolutely going to find what you are looking for. You guys came into this with an interest in finding out about workplace accidents, and you see uh, dozens of them, hundreds of them, honestly. There are constant accidents, and all of them are met with a very clinical, uninterested response. Uh, There is not any response to the first one or the second of like, we need to change protocols. Everything is of the mind of it's fine. This is like carry on. There's sort of like a sign off that says President Slater at the end of each one of these where there's like a spot for like recommendations. And like sometimes it just says they should work harder. Uh, there is uh, an innumerable amount of these. It is astonishing how many accidents you keep finding. Um, But you also find personnel records. And I want to give you two things about this with your crit. The first thing I want to give you is that there is no record of anyone by the name of Pofo ever working for this individual of any name. But you do find the personnel record for a Miss AJ Killings. Yeah, I, mean, I tried intimidation, that didn't work, so I guess now honesty, which is just, it is no game. I'm a being from a different dimension. I cannot actually influence anything that's happening to you or within your city that you built, as wondrous as it is. I am just merely a phantom passing through, uh, and when I'm gone, it'll be as if I was never here. And now I am aware of that. Interesting. <laughs> oh, I don't like the way and he said that. He leans back in his chair. And All right. I, 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 <laughs> Insight, a uh, stone rune. Can this guy see through the veil of space and time? <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. If he is a patron. He's probably <laughs> roughly equivalent to the banyan tree. All right, well, luckily I have advantage for my rune because I would have botched, but that's a seven. Still a fail, but not as cataclysmic. Fuck me. (laughs) I will say that through this, you look at this person and you feel as though they have realized exactly that they are part of some kind of simulacrum and they are intending in this moment now to take absolute advantage of it. I'm just saying there's always something to complain about. Billionaires whine constantly. No matter what, people are always unsatisfied because that's the nature of existence, you know? 
So you think it'd be great to be a cat, but I feel like you'd have a lot of different problems. I bet cats right now in the other room, Bjorf's like, oh, I wish I was a human. I would be able to open doors and drive cars and uh, do <laughs> hard drugs. And let me tell you, Bjork, it's not that easy. You got to get a driver's license <laughs> and you got to find someone who could give you the drugs. If cats could like talk, do you think they'd have like guides on how to like taste max their butthole? Okay, we're done. Last episode, <laughs> uh, there was an elf, and he was very rude to me, Quinn. <laughs> yeah. So last time you guys were in the uh, the vibe check for Popo, and you ran into some other Bodax, and Dan got hurt really bad, and you found that it was this weird industrial complex, and there was some investigations going on, there were some disagreements, people went in different directions, uh, as Austin alluded to, he went to the manager's office, met President Slater of Slater Mechanics, and uh, you botched, and uh, President Slater has figured out that he is a, a, a part of a simulacrum right now, and we're going to get to that, but I want to touch back with our, our two other characters right now, Stranger and Lillian, who you have discovered a couple things about this company. Uh, but more importantly, I need to ask, what are you going to do now? Because as we mentioned, uh, Hialeah is in this room having this conversation. Uh, but the last time you guys spoke, Hialeah uh, quite... Um, pointedly said that she had this and <laughs> she was going to go on her way. Awesomely, I think you'll find. Just very confident and ve very, like, never going to get in trouble ever again. And I, I feel like neither of us would have any reason to think, like, something catastrophically bad is happening right now in the one room that Hylia, Hylia went to. So, yeah, she's so, got like, this. She's got this. <laughs> she's big. She's got a sword. So, like, I, I think I... Ignore that sound of a tree getting cut down. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, I think the where we left off, I think we were going to look at one of the other, like, rooms for... I, I think Stranger had expressed interest in trying to find out more about the Furbolg. Yeah, so I have a list of the rooms that we have discovered. There was the main uh, floor. There was, of course, the manager room, uh, the manager's room, and human resources. I believe what we have left is break room, back rooms. Uh, and no, I think that's that's it. It's just uh, break room and back rooms are the other two rooms. Uh, and it doesn't sound like uh, Hiley has died, so it seems like those are our options. <laughs> and yeah, I also we we had. Originally, when we first got here, saw a uh, like a, a picture on someone's desk, a family picture of a furball woman, um, which we have not found any follow up on. We have gotten comments uh -huh. already. Fear, bulg, obviously not the correct pronunciation. It's an Irish or I guess Celtic language phrase meaning men from bulg, which is an area in Ireland. Uh, because this is a, an existing mythological concept. So, like, when people call the character from Final Fantasy VII uh, Kate Sith, when it's Ket She, uh, we're obviously fucking up very bad. It's Fear Bologa. Uh, I'll put this in the chat if anybody cares. I don't know if we're ever going to get it right, but this is the cr 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 correct pronunciation. <laughs> I couldn't say correct pronunciation. Isn't that funny? A, a Fear <laughs> Beluga? Like fear a Beluga whale? Fear Beluga. Fear Belug. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I have learned a new thing today. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not. I'm not getting that right ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, the audience wait you forever, Dan. Uh, so you have those two options in front of you. There's the break rooms and the back rooms, or vis uh, seeing what's up with Hiley in the manager's office. Which way are Stranger and Lillian going to go? Um, I think the break room might just make me really sad, based <laughs> off of all of the the data we have seen about this place thus far. <laughs> Like, I think it fully might just be a painted door on a wall uh, <laughs> at this point. So I I would suggest the back rooms. Um, I don't think, again, we have any reason really to follow up on what's going on with Ilya right now. And also, I think it's funnier to see what will happen. I already have a backup sheet if this elf toasts my ass. <laughs> I, I think that um, I'm also on board for the back rooms. 
All right, so you guys are going to head into the back rooms. Uh, the back rooms is an interesting term uh, at this point. Uh, it used to uh, just be uh, the part of a store that sucked. Uh, and then eventually uh, millennials got old enough to turn it into existential horror. Uh, this is not quite on that level, uh, but this is a level of uh, walking into what almost seems like it should be where storage and things would be kept. Like this is where uh, materials would be housed. This is where, you know, machinery that you would need, like, you know, uh, different uh, equipment would be stored uh, but instead kind of extends outwards in almost like a dark dungeon like maze structure but you can see that there are like shelving units next to you but everything that's on them looks like nonsense and is covered in like cobwebs and fake spiders and like little tombstones and stuff like that um well, I guess the the first thing would be to see if we can find anything of interest. Um, I I guess it previously I suggested that maybe this is the case of um, uh, someone else having swapped uh, or like uh, tossed a, another body part onto the the altar for uh, while we were in the middle of this process. And stranger, I guess, is trying to filter out. He, he's trying to like delineate, figure out a way to delineate what is from going off of that idea. What is from one body part and what's from another? And I guess he wants to try to track based off of what he saw in that original room. Like try to get the vibe for something like that versus this weird industrial hellscape that has been kind of uh, overlaid on everything. Uh, I would say your best shot for doing that would be an insight check. Okie dokie. I'm good at that. 20. 20 is a great roll. Uh, what I will say for Stranger is that an exact answer is always going to be somewhat hard to say because these, as you said, are seem to be two different people layered on top of one another. However, uh, there does seem to be anything that's like gothic does seem to point towards Pofo. Uh, it does seem to associate with death. It doesn't line up with what you would know about like a very cold, calculating business person. Uh, but I think more so it feels like wherever you see one of them is what the tree is trying to get across as it has uh, a challenge sort of interpreting two different uh, souls, so to speak, or, mm -hmm. or you know, visages. Yeah, I guess he's. I guess his uh, point of note would be, well, Lillian, I think we should go towards, I guess, the increasingly cartoonish death imagery. <laughs> I think I see an inflatable skeleton down there. Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess uh, g going toward the uh, uh, giant skeleton is probably better than uh, the scary machines that like gush way too much blood. <laughs> Have you seen the walls? It's bleeding, and it says you'll be here forever. <laughs> you know, I was, I wasn't gonna question that because I, I figured. I've never, I've never actually been to a factory before. My my town didn't really have any of those, so I like this is my first impression. It's very bad, so I'm just assuming that's there naturally. Str Stranger points at a different wall and says, "Look, it written in bones is days since the last incident." Well, this this is not accurate, and he goes and <laughs> rearranges it to be zero. <laughs> I was going to say the skeleton at the end of the hall has like a little joke on it. It's like, what's a skeleton's favorite food? Spare ribs. Spare, spare ribs. <laughs> they, all have, they, all, they all have seen the video. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly the video you're talking about. It makes me lose my fucking mind every time. I only thought of it because I was like, I believe that is also taken in back rooms of some sort. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let me get survival checks for both of you. Survival. Okay. Survival. 21. Way down here. 19. Wow. Survivals of 21 and 19. The group passes with flying colors. So I'm going to give you everything here. You are able to navigate your way through this like weird, dark, sort of back room dungeon that you find yourselves in until you come upon a particular scene of two clerics uh and a bodak on the ground uh sort of wounded 
and you can hear uh, muttering coming from the Bodak as these these two clerics are preparing holy spells and striking it over and over. Do the, do these clerics have like any like holy symbols that like could be identified with like a religion check? That would have to be a religion check, yeah. Uh, uh, 13. 16. So a 13 and 16 are both uh, good above average scores. What I will say is religion is a very funny thing. Nowadays, uh, this world was specifically created by the death of the gods, and as such, uh, specific gods don't really exist per se anymore. Uh, people find power in different ways. Hylia specifically gains their power from the Banyan tree, for example. Um, but you are not seeing any religious imagery that like specifically ties it to one god. However, there are symbologies on there that might feel familiar to you of just a general light, life, holiness kind of divinity. Uh, it doesn't seem tied to any one thing in particular that you immediately know of. Just, I, I think, I think Lillian is going to like uh, sp- speak up just, just a stranger and just like, I remember during uh, our, our uh, vibe check with uh, Dumas that like incidents, like when the person, like, like, a, like something that happened in the past, you can't, it, it it's kind of hard to interact with them because like if something was meant to happen, it like happens even if you try to stop it. So I was thinking maybe we can try to get a little closer and try to listen in on this before we do anything else. Sounds like a good idea to me. My concern is that this seems to be the end of Pofo's life and we have learned almost nothing about them. I think we're going to have to have a word with Miss Killings when we get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this whole place is all uh, jumbled up. I feel like Pofo is more of a mystery to me now than he was at the start. All I know about him now is that he has v- very uh, spooky decoration tastes. Lillian, you've been here longer than I. Do you know if anyone has ever gotten vibe checked twice? I think we're in uncharted water here. Uh, out of character, uh, would that be like a like a history check? Would I remember something like that? I, I've been here for a, a decent amount, I think. You've been here for a decent amount, so I would say a history check is fair to see if this is a situation you've ever heard coming up before. Let's see. History. That's a 13. Well, with a 13, I will say that Lillian doesn't recall uh, any particular instance of someone being vibe checked twice, no. And I will relay that to Stranger, like, no, I, I, I don't remember anything about, like, a, a second uh, vibe check or uh, doing it twice. Uh, we'll have to see, well, I guess, what the situation is once we leave here. Because this, we, if this is the end of Pofo, we have almost nothing to go off of. We, again, don't know what will happen if he even is thrown into the well. And he may have lost his one chance at an accurate assessment. Just if if there's... I, I don't like the feeling about that. It feels not fair if if someone can just come in and be like, oh, oh, you could t- take this other guy's leg while you're doing this and j- j- just mess up the whole thing for everybody. Yes, I think there may need to be some changes to the standard operating procedure going forward you you seem to be very knowledgeable about like uh like planning things like management operating that kind of stuff is that like something you used to do back at home or is it just something you're like naturally good at it takes a lot of effort and planning to grow the next generation of harvest kin You must have proper soil, proper distribution. How far apart are you going to place the seeds? Who are you going to cull from the vine? If you you remove every bud from a single seed, you will get one result that is much larger than the others. You can fill an entire field for just one being and grow it incredibly massive. But if it goes wrong then you've wasted all those resources. 
so it's like a, a a big risk and reward kind of thing. That's a lot different from just putting on uh, plays. Like you gotta practice and have your own set of skills for that. But like try, trying to plan around all this kind of stuff is a uh, interesting. Like ho- hopefully we can figure something out. You're smart. Well, we can only see what the situation at hand is after the fact. So. Why don't we see if we can gather anything from these mem? Uh, why don't we see if we can gather exactly what's happening here? And then he gestures towards uh, the execution taking place, and he's going to try to listen in to see if he can glean anything of value. Just uh, Faye like nods like in agreement, and also tries to listen in on this. Yeah, uh, there's no need for any rolls or anything like that. You guys have killed basically every check you needed to get here. So uh, what I'll say is as you approach the two uh, clerics, one of them is just consistently over and over again kind of striking uh, Pofo with uh, a Sacred Flame. And the other one will turn to you kind of like stop and be like, whoa, whoa, stand back there, citizens. This is a dangerous creature. You don't want to get near it. It could bite your head off. We're, we're making sure that the new world is going to be full of any of these horrifying creatures, okay? We're exterminating them for you. You can thank us later. Stranger's going to ask something very... So he, this basically confirms what he needs to know about these people. I don't think you would think to ask them questions about it. Lillian, of course, can. Stranger's going to ask uh, this priest a very weird question. Um, tell me, Cleric. Can you remember the face of your mother? Can you remember anything outside of this moment? <laughs> I'm not really sure what's going on. If this is some kind of riddle, I have a lot of work to do here. As you can see, this creature is still not uh, obliterated into smoke and nothingness. So I'm going to ask you to stand back, not ask me any more confusing questions. Uh, please, this is delicate work. Uh, and you can hear Pofo is... Uh, sort of mumbling something to himself mm-hmm. uh, that is very familiar to you. Uh, he's saying, well, it's okay. You'll be all right. You can pass. It's okay. Oh, Like he's whispering assurances uh, that you saw one of the Bodak do earlier, uh, but this time it's to himself. Mm-hmm. Just, I, I think Lillian wants to uh, speak up and ask and, and be like, well, I, I got a very hopefully straightforward question. Has this uh, evil demonic being like bitten off other people's heads? Like, wh- like, are like, what happened that like led you here? Oh, that's the thing. These things could turn on an instant. They have like a little like evil field of necrotic energy that they could turn on, start sapping the life. See, they exist to bring nothing but death. So they have this ability to bring other people closer to it. So we're all just taking precautions. That's why we're taking a couple steps back. If you guys could take a couple steps back, that'd be super handy. And we're just nearly with radiant energy from afar. Nobody will be hurt. Uh, this is It's good that we got here when we did. So you're saying he like could have done something, but he hasn't actually done anything specifically yet. You just found him and you, you're, you're doing precautionary stuff. Is that right? No, I have not seen anything mushroom person, but I do need you to understand you need to step back or you will be uh, considered uh, an ally of this creature and brought under the same scrutiny. So, so the cleric just did, did the cleric call me a mushroom person? Yes. Interesting. Very interesting. That implies book. Was that the scene when it happened? When you die, I hope someone treats your spirit with the same respect. I've had so many riddles today. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this one means. Is the answer shadow? Is is it all about shadows? The shadow of my my soul? You are a dying memory and a being lost to this world. Goodbye. And then he's just going to walk away because he doesn't think there's anything left of value here. He's, he's gotten what he's needed from this interaction. Just I, I think before Lillian like follows like Stranger back, like uh L- Lillian's just gonna like say something like Well, I guess I can't really do anything to stop this because it already happened, but 
but like she, uh, Faye's gonna like call out to Puffo, like, "Hey, we're gonna figure out what happened and and, and see if we can bring you back, buddy. D- j- just h- hang in there; it will be all right." It's okay. It all it all comes for us one day. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. It's okay. And uh, you'll just leave to the sound of radiant strikes hitting this creature over and over again until it sort of fades off into the distance. Just, just Lillian's just going to like sidebar with Stranger again. Like, I am doing my best to remember this is technically not real, but that 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 was that still sucked. It is reality for many creatures. We have no evidence to or for or against Pofo, whether or not he has ever done the things he's been accused of. But if you believe that by default everyone deserves another chance, then so does he. And quite frankly, his revival in a fa- in a way, or at least attempted revival, I believe is more valuable than likely many who have come before him because it tells us what happens if someone like him is put in the well. Just not, L- Lillian's like nodding along as you're saying this and she's like, yeah, yeah, I do, I, I, I do think th- this guy deserves a second chance like the others. Like, we, we should get out of here and see if there's anything else we can find before that ominous ticking clock thing chimes 12 or whatever it would be. Yeah, so let's see if uh, she's done speaking with the manager, shall we? I was going to say, <laughs> at this point, let's turn our attention over to Hialeah, who you are staring face to face. I should say face to face. He's behind a desk. He's actually very comfortably staring at you from afar. Uh, but President Slater is looking at you with uh, cognizance you've never seen from something inside of a vibe check before. Yeah, last time I got the sense that he looked through me in a way I didn't think was possible. Maybe the real President Slater realized our interaction was going on, a thing uh, she wouldn't have considered before. I don't know if that's 100% true, but that's how I'm playing it at least. I know what a sun elf is. Quinn, can you tell the audience what that means? Is it just like Legolas with a tan? What's going on there? Uh, so D&D has, uh, how do I describe this? Like 400 billion different forms of elves. Uh, I believe sun elves are kind of uh, considered to be more in line with uh, the high elf archetype. Basically, like your, fi- your, your fantasy flavor of elves basically comes in two flavors. One is the wood elves, which are like your Legolas uh, arrow shooting types. And then the other ones are like the high elves that are masters of magic and all sorts of things. Uh, sun elves particularly have sort of like golden skin and are kind of the dickheads. <laughs> of the elvish uh people uh at least how they're sort of written in monster manuals and things like that or or textbooks they are usually the most uh sort of i don't know of a nicer way to say it they're like the conservative <laughs> of the elves which is saying something considering elves also tend to get typecast as kind of an asshole in almost like in most incarnations yeah, so last episode, uh, Hylia tried to uh, just uh, bullshit this guy. He saw through it. Then she tried to come clean, and he did something uh, upsetting. And so now uh, I'm going to look around this room. You described last time that there was, like, models of a city or something. He mentioned something about a city. There's, like, other things in this room. I actually want to roll perception to see if there's anything in here that may give me uh some a next move. I'm going to roll that. That's a 20. Oof, so glad. I thought I was toast. 20 is is great uh what i will say is uh there were two other sort of uh things of note there is a large window uh to the opposite side of the room from where you entered that looks out into a city it's not a model city this is a full gigantically built city unlike anything that you have seen uh in at least a very 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 long time hialeah uh, this is, uh, you know, skyscrapers at certain points. Uh, there is uh, gilded looks to everything. And in particular, I noted that the city itself almost sort of 
breathes, there's like a movement to it that in a way can almost be read as like respiration of some kind. It is uh, rather surprising. And then behind you, you see blueprints that to you don't make a ton of sense right now. I want to be very clear that there are blueprints, but without a different kind of role, I can't give you what they are specifically. Um, and on that kind of note, uh, President Slater is going to be like, so tell me what this whole arrangement here is. Uh, yeah, she's going to respond. Uh, I think I said she was speaking in Elvish last time because he's an elf and she was just trying mm -hmm. to get on his good side. But uh, seeing that he is uh, you know, smarter and more powerful than she imagined, she is again going to switch languages to Sylvan and even more ancient and like highfalutin <laughs> language. This is like the progenitor of Elvish. She's just trying to see. I don't know. Not necessarily that'll be impressed, but just like... Um, you know, just because uh, basically he's going to know that language and then he'll feel smarter. You know what I'm saying? Like giving him a chance uh -huh. to also show off as she says. Okay. She says, uh, well, there's no point in hiding anything from you. You've seen through me. So to be honest, I'm researching the Bodax that work at your factory to understand if they are people, if they have sentience and uh, can make choices because uh, I thought they were just undead zombies without conscience or morals but they seem to be reassuring each other uh and i need to know more about that so that's that's all it is and she is like pointedly looking at the blueprints looking at the city just like oh interesting fascinating oh whoever made this must be talented and strong and have <laughs> impressive genitals <laughs> oh my God. uh president slater is going to kind of lean back and say there are no Bodex who work in my factory. It would be a tremendous waste of resources to allow something that dangerous to be around people. No, something else is going on here. I was supposed to be revived. I'm not revived. This is any kind of motions to the world around him. Some, some kind of simulation of my world. This isn't... This isn't exact. I would not have these gothic thrills over here. But I am supposed to be revived. Is this part of the process? Still in Sylvan, she says, Oh, you appear to have uh, intuited something that not even I understood, which is that you are mixed up in this Bodak research. Uh, most impressive, sir. Um, you wouldn't happen to be employing someone main, named Miss Killings, would you? I didn't even know she was involved. He pauses for a moment as if, like, kind of searching, and he says, mm, yes, Miss Killings. I believe she was the one tasked with bringing me back. She has a due date she needs to hit. Oh, well, I am in charge of that process, bringing you back, so we could absolutely expedite your revival. Could you tell me more about this due date? Because I, I would want to help you hit it, obviously. It's a simple contract. As long as she wants the powers I bestow, she needs to hit a certain due date where the contract will be void and her powers will be revoked. This all seems rather dull, doesn't it? Is this really all that this process is? You just talk to a ghost? Yes, unfortunately, I'm a simple servant of something much greater than myself. I am not at all interesting. I'm not a renowned writer, the, you know, the author of Sproutling <laughs> Scholars, beloved by millions. But uh, uh, can you imagine if I was? You'd be, wow, you'd be impressed and you'd treat me with even just a little bit of respect. But no, I'm just a lowly servant. Um, do you, you wouldn't happen to have a Pomeranian dog, would you? Uh, so at this point, I will. Uh, I've, you've done the classic dice funk move of uh, technically not lying. So you 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 kind of skirted around the idea, but by saying that you are not uh, an important writer, or anything like <laughs> that, I will need a deception check to see how well he is is buying the story. Oh no, I have terrible <laughs> deceptions. <I'm laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, that's a two. Nope. No. <laughs> this is fine, honestly. She deserved this. <laughs> he just kind of looks at you and he says, 
it seems as though there is a process here that is probably poorly managed. It is understandable that not every biome has the resources that the civilization biome has. After all, we are the most cultured, we are the most advanced, we are the most progressed. I feel as though we might be able to help each other. Okay, so big lore thoughts. So as you said in episode one, the gods have died. Their final gift was the locations that we're living in, such as the island. Uh, you're saying this person lives in this, this civilization gift, basically, which seems to be a living city. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Do I know anything about this place? How far away is it? Do they have uh, fucking missiles? <laughs> How scared should I be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you give me a history check, Hylia? 13. 13. So you have heard of the civilization uh, gift, the civilization biome. Uh, you have heard it is a gigantic city uh, that at some point you probably intend to visit in your adventures in this new world, but maybe have gotten sidetracked by the tree. Uh, you know that it is decently far away, though, and that's probably why you haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but it is also sort of the place that most new inventions of this world come from. Uh, particularly a lot of different kinds of uh, what was be called forerunner technology, basically uh, science that existed at one point before the world was destroyed uh, has been revived under uh, certain brilliant leaderships. Okay, so two things here. One is I am definitely canonizing all that baby geniuses talk in the first couple episodes. Hialeah <laughs> did write uh, Sproutling Scholars, and she it was successful, but she's embarrassed of it because people like President Slater look down on her. You know what I'm saying? It's like she has her, her niche fandom, but she doesn't get respect from like real critics, and so she's kind of resentful of this guy on that level. The second thing is these blueprints that we haven't really gotten deeper into because I needed to make a role. I realized I do have Smith's tools, so I am something of a, a person capable of crafting and making stuff. Can I roll perhaps my Smith's tools proficiency to gain some uh, understanding of what the blueprints I'm seeing are? Very interesting use. Yeah, I'll say absolutely. Roll your Smith's tools and let's see if you can figure this out to some degree. All right. And as my fire rune allows, I can double my proficiency for my tools. Uh, this is wow. going to be a 20 fucking four. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Incredible roll. Uh, what I will say, I'm not going to hide anything. 24 is, is, is an incredible result. Um, this to you looks like a vehicle of some sort, uh, something far more advanced than you have seen. Uh, this is a world that has initially been sort of a wild west frontier uh, than the new world has been. Uh, and this is something uh, that looks like a gigantic leap in advancement. Uh, I will say uh, that Hylia may have even seen this. Have you dabbled much in, in Forerunner technology? I know we don't want to specifically date where your character has been, but have they seen uh, like pieces of information from the old world at all? So yeah, my character's background is far traveler. My kind of uh, uh, understanding of my own backstory is that she's been pretty much everywhere there is to go. She's like the longest living species. Um, so I, unless there's a specific reason I haven't been someplace, I want to have gone everywhere I can because that's kind of like her whole thing is she's jaded and she's like, whatever. I don't even, I know everything. I'm a conceited, arrogant kind of prick. And then she's like, oh no, a beautiful tree with power is beyond my imagination. Now I have childlike wonder again. I'm going to become a priest. I'm having a fucking 7,000 year <laughs> life crisis. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I'll say that you have definitely seen a version of this technology before. This is a train uh, that looks uh, like President Slater is on the docket to build next, and you see that there is sort of uh, notes and such indicating that he intends to build a train to connect all of the new world to allow sort of instantaneous or near instantaneous uh, transportation between all of the different biomes with the civilization biome as the hub. Oh my gosh, it, Quinn, it, I, I, maybe we can talk about this off air. Are you are you uh, prefiguring an Eberron season, the D&D &D train setting? Because I definitely wanted to do uh -huh. one someday. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, this is, this is potentially a little little nugget, a little a little push in that direction. <laughs> okay, I've definitely considered it. Train season, train season. <laughs> One moment as I quickly open up my Google Doc for season thirteen ideas and go go to the train section <laughs> to get ready to make some edits potentially. <laughs> oh yeah, Eberron. You can't have pumpkins and trains, Dan. We you we bitch. literally had a conversation about this, Austin. Oh, is that you? I because I remember this sounds so familiar. I remember seeing this book at the at the comic store. I don't remember if we bought it or not, but 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 I remember seeing a Warforged on the cover, and it was like, ooh, steampunk setting. <laughs> yeah, it's basically steampunk or you know uh, steampunk adjacent. Uh, a lot to lot to process here. Um, I did have an idea, but I so hmm. I think what I want to roll now is, hmm, fuck, 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 fuck. I have so many different thoughts. I want to go in a thousand different directions. So I'm going to, at the end of the sentence, take a beat and then read you my whole sentence. Mm -hmm. So Hylia takes a big, long look at the train, her eyes widening so much that, <laughs> that you know, her, her face is like, you can see inside of her uh, body because she's a tree, <laughs> essentially, into the water reservoir in there, sloshing around. And then she, I think on some level, I don't know if this is a justified fear. Her fear is that, oh, this technology man is going to, if I bring him back, he's going to, like, invade and take my tree. Uh, you know, maybe he doesn't give a shit at all. Uh, maybe she'll just ask. Fuck it. I'm not going to stop playing around. It's like, uh, so if you can see me and understand what's going on on some level, you must be very smart and powerful. Uh, what utility do you, would you even have uh, if you controlled this process? I, you seem like a man of ambition. I don't know if control the process is the right word. Streamline it feels like a more necessary term. I like to advance things forward, and I imagine there are flaws in any existing system that could be improved with proper resources. How many of your teams are there? Are you a solo diver? Are there multiple people? How often are vibe checks done? Oh, so much information. I was going to say that you sound a lot like my friend, Stranger. He's a pumpkin. Uh, he's also trying to uh, introduce reforms. I th I'm not sure about all that. In fact, uh, have you considered pineapple? You have to remind me, what does <laughs> pineapple uh, do again? Pineapple uh, is the activation phrase for an ability I have from my stone rune. Reaction, uh, they must uh, make a wisdom save or be charmed for one minute. Oh, very interesting. Okay. All right, time uh, for that plus 30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on a second here. I actually have to... Goodness, Lillian, these staircases are quite large, aren't they? <laughs> I can't believe we've been walking for so long. <laughs> this is happening while you two are fucking in the hallway. Are you are you hearing a chainsaw? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What what is the number I'm looking to beat? Fifteen. Twenty two. <laughs> Uh, all right. She has one of her uh, swords is actually, uh, you know, the knives that uh, bartenders use to cut limes. It belonged to a giant, so it's bigger than that. Uh, but it glows pink and uh, maybe uh, feel he feels like a, a cool mint sensation, but nothing else. Um, he is going to snap his finger, uh, not as though to like do anything. It's like he's trying to like call your attention in a way. Mm -hmm. And he says... We were in the middle of negotiations. If you wish for it to devolve, we can. But I believe it is to the benefit of both parties here for us to talk about this before things become uncivilized. <laughs> oh, wow. That's really good. Uh, you're so spooky, mister. <laughs> I love your theming and your motifs. I'm just a tree. I, I'm, I'm just a part of nature. Uh, she She's <laughs> like in her mind, maybe even taking little notes because she's like, oh, this is good shit. <laughs> Let me take uh, get my scrolls out. Uh, do we want to cut to the other two? Uh, so I will, I will say at this point uh, to Stranger Lillian, there are two options ahead of you and you see that the clock is just about run out the you know the the end of the day marker uh is is coming up so i will say that you have a a, a question right now of where do you go do you check on highly in the manager's office or do you go see the break room 
you know, I'm actually kind of feeling the break room. I'm kind of <laughs> feeling the break room. <laughs> my my thought is uh, checking in on Hialeah because uh, no, no, no. Let me <laughs> let me have this. <laughs> I didn't know this factory made toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It feels like Austin tells us to go to the break room. Let's go to the break room, uh, I, William. Yeah, that, Just, that, well, that's I have this sudden feeling that we should go to the break room. <laughs> I mean, you should also could split up and go to different rooms to get maximum information. Yeah, I just want mm. I, like if, if I if I want the the villain to uh, get over, I believe is the term by smoking my ass. That's cool. Don't save me. <laughs> it makes him cooler. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to follow Lillian and Stranger for a quick moment as you open up the door into this break room and uh, the initial like first couple feet of this room absolutely ring to you as like a shitty break room in a place that doesn't care there's like a really crappy table with like three chairs everything's very dirty uh there's not a lot of room to really do anything there's like a water cooler that's you know pretty unimpressive uh it it stands as like something that feels very ungothic there's no like gothic architecture or anything to make this spot cool it just seems sad and lonely uh but the room sort of like extends beyond what it feels like it should and in that you see uh a hospital room and you see two individuals who are both fear belongs is that did i get it right austin i think you nailed it in a way i never would have thought possible (laughs) (laughs) um so there is one who is uh in the hospital bed it is an older woman who appears to be unconscious and then there is a much younger individual sitting next to her holding her hand and they are wearing a very like loud hawaiian (laughs) t-shirt Uh, and they are just sort of quietly staring at her with uh, a, we- uh, a a strange intensity. So there, there, there's a, a woman in a hospital bed, and then two fear belugs uh, watching her. One, just, just a- one, oh, just, just one. one. Okay. There, there are two individuals: one in the bed and one uh, sitting by their side. Got it. And the one by their side is the fear belug. They're both fear balloons. Okay. All right. Never mind. Cut all that out. Okay. Um, <laughs> fear balloons. Fear balloons. Fear balloons. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep saying fear balloons. Everyone's going to be so impressed. They're going to be like, I didn't know Dice Funk had it in them. They're just saying Celtic words. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, does it seem like one of them is going to turn into a Bodak? <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how I would tell what role you would do for that. <laughs> Give me a narrative prediction role. <laughs> you can't just ask someone if they're going to turn into a Bodak. It's so rude. I got a 92. Is that it? <laughs> okay. No. Uh, unfortunately, you had to roll on a D1000. Uh, there's so many opportunities. You don't know which way it'll go. I- I'll say... Uh, you can investigate this scene further or do an insight check or something like that. Uh, but I mean, more than that, I don't know how I would tell you if one of them becomes a photo <laughs> Um, so I think Stranger, I guess, will... Is there like a, ch- a chair he can pull up and sit beside them? Yeah, absolutely. You could take You could take chairs from the break room. No one, notably, is in there. He'll he'll take the likely overturned trash can that is being used as a chair and uh, bring it into this sterile hospital room and sit down ne- uh, next to next to them, uh, and he'll um, uh, turn to the person that's looking at this uh, person in the bed and say, um, "I'm sorry that you two are going through this. Uh, would you like to talk about it?" Uh, Lillian like also comes into the hospital room and. I, I'm going to assume, like, w- would this hospital bed have, like, that little, like, checkboard, like, not checkboard, like, clipboard thing that, like, has, like, the patient's, like, name and, like, what's up with them that, like, you get in, like, the hospital dramas and stuff. I, wa- I wanted to check that out. Yeah, so, yeah, there is, uh, I forget what they call them, just sort of, like, their their overview board, diagnosis board. Just call it a chart. 
chart. Yeah, yeah the chart. Is, is, is it just called a chart? I, for some reason, I thought there was a more clinical name for it. Something with Latin in it, but I guess not. I mean, there might be, but um, nurses literally just say, it's like, oh, let me check the chart. That's just what they say. That's right. That's what they say. Um, so you can look through the chart, and it does look like this is a terminally ill patient um, that is near her deathbed, essentially. And and then another question before uh, the other f- fear belug uh, responds or not. How old does the Hawaiian shirt one look? Like you said, notably younger. Is this like a child or more just like a young adult? Young adult. You would uh, be able to kind of glean very quickly at a glance. This looks like uh, probably the age of like a parent and a child. Okay, interesting. Just L- Lillian's just making note of that while like Stranger like sits down on a trash can. Uh, so uh, Stranger asks his questions of like, oh, you know, w- would you like to talk about kind of what you're going through? And I'll note this: this uh, fear blog is just going to kind of not say anything um, directly to you, or at least doesn't turn his attention towards you. He's just kind of holding his mom's hand and staring at her very intensely as he's like, oh, it's. It's okay. She can go on. It's she's not alone. I'm here with her. That doesn't make it any less hard. Especially not for you. No. But um, you know, it happens to us all. We all go. It's just nice if you don't have to do it alone. So I'm here until she goes. I think we both can agree on that. Do you mind if I ask your name? Mm, I'm a Pofo. I, I knew it was the Hawaiian short guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought so, but I also wasn't sure if they had separate identities. That was like the last piece of the puzzle for me, because now it's like uh, we're bringing back someone <laughs> who's like nice and also someone who sucks. Uh, what a juicy <laughs> mystery. I probably shouldn't just take part of the actual podcast to compliment Quinn. That's tacky, right? <laughs> <laughs> now I need it. <laughs> it's really, this is really going to fuel the rest of my day. <laughs> it's very late, audience, so that's not much. <laughs> I'm going to ride high from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. and then it's time to get to sleep, see if any snuffles show up in my Pokemon Sleep Island tonight. It's going to be a great night for Quinn. They got they got Snuffle up against some Pokemon now? How dare. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, strange, stranger's gonna ask Pofo, if, if you had a chance to bring someone back, or to, let's say, come back after death, would you take it? I don't know. I mean, I guess so. I, you would still die. It happens to us all, but... Maybe you'd come back a little more comforted, knowing it wasn't as scary as you thought it would be. Don't make this guy too likable, because <laughs> Hiley is going to argue, Bonex love death. Let them stay dead. It's actually good for them. <laughs> it's enrichment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dying is putting enrichment in their enclosure. They love it. <laughs> um, does Lillian want to ask uh, Bo- Pofo anything? Yeah, like, I think when, when like, Lillian gets a chance, like, Faye wanted to, like, uh, come over and, like, pr- probably, like, all, like, probably not grab a chair, but just, like, lean over, like, so, so uh, Pofo there, you said your name was, uh, how, how long has, um, uh, your, your, your parent been here, like, uh, in, in this condition? Mm. It's been a bit. She's been sick for a while. It's it's hard to get good help, you know, but we try, but you know, some things are inevitable, I think. It's it's okay, you know. We've got to spend a lot of time together and then I'll be here so she can move on with someone she loves by her side. And that's good. It, it it is it is pretty nice that you're going to be able to be here for her when she passes on. Pofo uh, will turn to you, Lillian, and kind of uh, have a an interesting expression as he says, 
death is important. It's, you know, it's terrifying, but we all have to be ready for it because it'll come when you don't expect it. So I always like to be there if it happens so nobody goes alone. Has this ha has th have you had to lose someone else before? Like before her? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. It happens to us all. I hope that you have someone next to you when it happens. I think, like, Lillian would either be thinking of, like, fair parents who are, like, way back in, like, the nature biome and, like, Yggdraville, or Faye would be thinking about, uh, needles, uh, like, so, like, self-described, like, best friend of needles. Mm. Uh, with that, I will say that the door to the break room opens, and two Bodak walk into the room, who are saying, break time's over, break time's over, break time's over, and they start walking towards you, uh, Lillian and Stranger. Uh, okay, let me see something. Do they, if so, I wanted to ask something else before this started, um, but I don't think we have time now. Um, I guess first question, do these seem like they're about to attack us? Oh, I guess they also yes. have necrotic ore. Okay, so they are just going <laughs> to attack us. Um, all right. Uh, uh, so before before initiative or anything happens, I'm I'm going to be a, a jerk and cut away back over to Hialeah. Yay! Who, uh, you you have just had a, a threat kind of put in front of you, which is just like, hey, let's talk a deal, or things are going to get shitty. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have Hialeah switch languages yet again to primordial. <laughs> <laughs> An even more arcane, ancient language. This is of just the elements, fire, water, earth, air. Obviously, earth is her specialty. Um, this is just a, a character choice I've made for her, kind of a pretentious and also, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with playing with his ego. And she's going to say, okay, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. And she uh, gestures out the window to the breathing city. Uh, with you know, with her with her fracture, her her weapon, and she just says, uh, "Do you have something like the banyan tree?" Yes, we do. And I want to clarify: he has never had any issue understanding you. He has never spoken to you in any other language. He has never tried to match you in that language. But he has always seemed to understand exactly what you are saying. So I just want to note that. Uh, for for the record, uh, and he is going to stand up and walk over towards the window into this city and put his hands sort of behind his back and like stand very tall and say, this city is the most incredible thing in this entire world. I don't think anyone but myself truly appreciates how much progress this city has brought to this new world. So you think the city is alive and has a will the same way the banyan tree is? You know, under the, under the water, in the ocean, they have this thing they call the riddle snake. I think it's the same kind of class or type of thing. It's just something new and inexplicable and uh this is like there's like the gears are turning in her head because I, I she does love the banyan tree she's interested but i also think <laughs> her first love is just knowing stuff and i think she is kind of tempted to just trade information with this guy although it's obviously a bad idea uh yeah president slater is going to say I've not heard exact information about this tree or the sea that lies below. There is, and he kind of motions his hand around, vague details, but large parties that have come back haven't been super successful about detailing the entire process. And perhaps that is a blind spot in our research, as if there are powerful landmarks around you such as this city is to me then perhaps we are 
closer than we might think. And perhaps we may both do in our best interest to grow and enrich that which is important to us. Yeah, uh, maybe a religion check, I think, because um, once again, we're thinking of these things as kind of the equivalent of gods, because uh, you know, the gods are dead, Zeus got his ass kicked, <laughs> but like whatever the banyan is, whatever the riddle snake is, um, is there a way for us to exchange like information magically? Because this guy's dead, you know? So, mm-hmm. But his like mind is here. Is there a way we can, uh, you know, use our Pokemon G- Game Boy Link cable? <laughs> <laughs> you you, do, you want a street pass with him? Yeah. and get his details. To be to be clear, this is um, extremely stupid because this guy's obviously evil. But uh, yeah, this is like a character choice of just like someone who doesn't know when to uh, leave well enough alone. <laughs> One question I'd ask, though, is I think we all maybe this guy's in a different level, uh, but we did establish that um, Dumas did not remember anything that happened during the vibe check. Sure, sure, sure. Which is why the last episode, maybe I misread this. I, I, Austin, understood that this something was different about this guy and that maybe he would. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I will say this for the record now. Um, we will not know the answer to that. This is pretty uncharted territory. No one has ever gained sentience inside of a vibe check before, to your knowledge. Uh, so you don't really know what will happen on the other end. Um, so I just want to clarify that uh, this is this is, this is is new ground for everybody. Um, and I will say, uh, instead of a religion check, because while I do love the idea of religious street, street passing with one another... <laughs> Um, I don't know how that would really apply to any like practical. That's, that's like a new kind of magic almost. What if instead, uh, this individual offers to you the ability to both, uh, use detect thoughts on one another, uh, and he will provide you with a scroll to do so, uh, to read thoughts and let, uh, sort of to see individually what each other has seen through their own eyes. Um, and kind of allow that as a way to share that information. Uh, but you also have the opportunity to break the agreement and try to probe deeper. Sure. So this is a, uh, kind of a one-time thing. You're not giving me a scroll of detect thoughts to keep with me. Cause obviously I can't take shit out of here. Right. Uh, well, this, you are being handed a scroll of detect thoughts. However, it will be used to cast detect thoughts on him. Um, you're basically both just going to exchange casting detect thoughts on one another. Uh, so it'll be, it'll disappear after it's used. You don't really know what would happen if you decided to be like, I'm going to take this and run. Um, who knows? Maybe it'll stay. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) You know, the meme clown to clown communication. Um, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) that's kind of what's happening here. Um, I guess I will try just inciting. I have advantage on that because of my stone runes i might as well because is this guy gonna try to probe deeper on me am i gonna get hoisted by my own scroll (laughs) um yeah give me give you absolutely give me an insight check 23 23 so uh i want to give you with the 23 the direct answer to question to your question do you think he is going to probe deeper into your mind the answer is no um you get the impression this guy doesn't care about what you have deep down um in, in, in a sense you are beneath him uh and he doesn't see a reason why he should need to dig down into your brain um and i will say in a larger scale you believe that comes from a sense of infallibility is maybe not the correct word but you you it comes from a confidence that this man has that he he isn't going to betray what he's telling to you because he doesn't need to. He's going to get what he wants and this is all this is all that works for him. He he seems like this is this is exactly on track for what he wants to do okay perfect that's actually i've I've been thinking about this uh, episode all week obviously because i was so excited about this elf (laughs) that you introduced but that was like (laughs) that was my guess at his psychology was that he was like imperious and so like it's not even worth like doing that so i'm I'm glad to have that uh confirmed but yeah i think where i am at with my character right now (laughs) is that she so badly wants to know what is going on that she is willing to do this um so i'm excited for uh people to find out be mad at her because i'm I'm gonna do this i can't believe slater doesn't want to tap the sap 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you you were first going to initially uh, do this exchange as you're both going to read each other's thoughts, um, and you know Slater is just going to read yours, and I will stress that what he is looking for and what he is uh, going to get from surface level thoughts from you is how the vibe check works, what sort of the arrangements are, all of the details, everything surrounding that. And then in exchange, he is going to give surface level thoughts on how this city he is from kind of works, how he views it, things like that. And then you have the choice to try to dig deeper into this man's thoughts. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to stick with uh, not going deeper uh, because it just uh, I think at this point she has uh, insecurities about her ability to do so. Um but uh, I do, I do think it's tempting. She really does think about it for a while there. But I also think she's not, um, she's not fully committed to Sparkle Motion <laughs> at this point. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the exchange will go through completely innocently. You will both get the information you want. Yeah, you see this city as President Slater sees it. Um, and it, it does appear to be a breathing, living city. There is uh, a vivaciousness to the buildings, to the streets, uh, the street lights. Everything exists in like a harmonious union that almost functions like different parts of the body would. It is eerie to you, but you see it through President Slater's eyes, which is like almost fatherly pride. Yeah, Hialeah says... It's obvious what you need from me. I'm the gatekeeper between you and breathing oxygen again. What uh, are you offering me? I, let's say, obviously, uh, protection, because I think you have some kind of magic you could obliterate with me with, but what else is going on there? Resources, I imagine, is something your small community could probably do with. I would bring along ample resources other teams that could handle this work so it is not all importantly daunted on top of you we would bring reverence to your tree those who might seek to study it and those who would seek to worship it help grant it power help see its grow and see if we can understand its place in this wider beautiful world of ours and and he kind of looks at you for a moment. He looks over to the blueprints on the wall behind him, which at this point he has not completely understood that you have like gleaned the results of. He says, I would like to make the island that I believe exists in your biome a uh, easily reachable hub to increase its potential and its progress. And I think we can create a flawless wonderful system oh my god he wants to modernize my tropical paradise and turn my church into a mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> i'll make what now <laughs> that was out of character <laughs> you son of a yeah. bitch i uh, know it's great though because obviously he was like i'm gonna drown all your friends in blood i'd be like okay you're that kind of guy but this is i mean he's just he's just liberalism he's just the liberalism elf <laughs> <laughs> um a fucking brutal um austin has been confronted by his oldest enemy capitalism once again and he might be going with it <laughs> well here's the thing it's not capitalism it's pre-capitalism right this is uh, uh -huh. building the railroad uh, so you can fix it this time <laughs> <laughs> this is this is building the railroad that allows capitalism to happen but we're, we're before that this is uh you know modernization this is the industrial revolution this is the thing right before capitalism which is of course the number one theme of all uh Western stories, all cowboy stories. Remember in uh, Red Dead Redemption when Arthur sees a car? Was it Arthur or was it John? John Marston sees a car for the first time, uh, which is beautiful because I feel like Wet Team is going to uh, look up and see a fucking train. <laughs> 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 oh, this is so fucking good. God damn it. God damn it. I have to decide. Is is uh, uh, is Hialeah going to be a fucking quizzling right now? Because I was like, okay, my, my character is this kind of... Uh, 
you know, uh, self-involved nerd. She wants to write. It's going to be important. Maybe she'll get the acclaim she never got for Sproutling Scholars. Oh, no, the tree likes me. What if I become a priest? God, this is my fucking life. This is Austin's backstory. Uh, <laughs> it, it's so funny because I spent, I also spent, of course, a long time thinking about how is this uh, episode going to go. And I thought I would have, like, religious rage at kind of her sacred place being, in a way, a little bit desecrated, but not. Nah. <laughs> No, that's the thing, though. I also thought because I was I was literally being like, uh, "You disrespect my tree, you, uh, you know, I'm gonna crucify you or something." Uh, you, you diss my dog, you fluff my hog, as the comic famously says. <laughs> um, but like, oh, there's uh, every every biome has one of these. Uh, Quinn and I have not discussed this, by the way. But the idea that there's just a class of like things in the world in the dice funk world now i actually just i thought of a name for them quinn we can cut this out if you don't like it but you know how uh in the world things that exist are called phenomenon Mm-hmm. well things that don't exist are called noumenon i'm putting a link in the chat here in case you're not familiar with this this is basically the opposite of things that exist if that makes sense um, which is because they're, un- they're things that are unknowable, like the riddle snake, which is like it looks like a snake and also an eel and also like a worm. And it's like, you know, what is it? Um, and I'm like, what if this there's just these things in the world that are just you literally can't be understood. And Hialeah is willing to make a deal with the devil to understand them. Oh, I can easily slot this into 13 if this is what we do. <laughs> Yeah, I want to note, I did not clarify any of this. This was simply, we kind of also alluded to it a little bit in the previous arc, that there's an ocean that just demands sacrifice out there. Uh, there yeah. is. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's right. The, well, that the, the one the Kuatoa did. <laughs> I, to be very clear, I chose Kuatoa because they were an established race, but that ocean was going to do that regardless of who it oh, was. Okay, I got a different read on that. No, I like the idea that there's a living ocean that is also one of these things. Um, yeah, I, you know what? I think this is fuck it, we ball. I think the, the <laughs> idea of the uh, the annoying writer character was fun, uh, but also <laughs> I think I think this is more fun. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, she says, "All right, deal." All right, President Slater is going to pull out uh, from thin air. He's going to kind of like snap his wrist. And flames will shoot out and, like, reconstitute themselves into a piece of paper, a parchment, essentially. And uh, he is going to scribble on it and then uh, basically take this 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 contract and turn it towards you, Hialeah, to sign. Uh, and he notes an agreement, then, that we both uphold both of our ends of the arrangement. Yeah, so um, we don't need to actually go through the contract, you know, line by line. This is, of course, my area of expertise. Uh, but let's just, uh, do you want me to roll anything to assume there aren't, like, tricks or traps and, like, I'm agreeing to something that, uh, you know, the character is, uh, you know, interested in? And it's not that it's not going to be biter in the ass. It'll just be, like, because of the choices she made, not because she's bad at reading. Yeah, uh, you can absolutely give me... Um... Well, Austin, you're a legalese expert. What what do you think would be a great role to like decipher a contract, essentially? Yeah, I mean, uh, the first thing that comes to mind would be survival. It, <laughs> I think Arcana. I think it's Arcana. Okay, <laughs> it's it's, yeah. it's reading the scrolls. It's understanding the ancient language. It's uh, you know the rhythms of the universe. Uh, that's that's why my what I would do. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. 20 she loves reading she loves reading so much (laughs) she she loves to read so yeah uh this contract does seem to make uh particular promises on both ends that um you know slater will uh once returned pull resources from all of what he has over here in progress and start uh putting those resources towards the Banyan tree, towards the vibe checks. Uh, He will be complete logistical support for everything the island will need. There will be reverence treated to the tree. It is not something like I don't want to like make it put in there like, oh, we're going to tear down a tree. This is absolutely something he is coming in and respecting. Uh, In return, uh, it is very clear what the thing is for you, uh, Hialeah. You are to bring back President Slater uh, by a specific date. If you do not, 
your entire body will explode. Holy <laughs> shit. That's badass. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it, you, you can see, you, you read it. it. It's got fancier language than that to it, but you are able to uh, parse it to be like, oh, I die if I don't do this. Yeah, I'll have a sudden, I'll have a spontaneous combustion uh, incident. Uh, it's the official yes. language. Um, that's great. Uh, I assume the date is is doable. Like it's not like two days ago or anything from my perspective. So yeah, I don't want to have to pull us down too much with the the nitty gritty. I will say that uh, you have until the end of the next arc to get President Slater handed off to be revived. All right. I do wanted to make a canon because I've we actually had this is like the third time we've reverted to calendars and dice funk. I do want to say uh, we use the French Republican calendar uh, officially, so it is the sixth. Oh, so so Monday. It's the sixth of Brumaire uh, right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so have him back by Monday, and you'll be all good. Um, uh, Hylia adds one thing to the contract. Uh, <laughs> smirking. Uh, can she be tree pope? <laughs> what not big papa you're giving up on that one <laughs> what do you fucking mean papa, papa means pope that's literally what that word means uh, big papa the tree pope <laughs> yeah absolutely you can add it <laughs> and slater gives zero reaction to it he's almost just like hmm <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, for, from his perspective, it's going to be a figurehead. It's not; it doesn't change anything. It's just for her ego. Yeah. I, I, that's not a joke. Literally, how you say Pope in Italian, "il Papa." That is one to one. Man, I should have known that. I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> also, the yeah, fuck yes, fuck yes. <laughs> President Slater is going to you sign this contract then? Yeah, in a big, uh, ostentatious John Hancock ass way. Everyone needs to know this is going to be in a museum someday. How I became tree pope. <laughs> People won't ever talk about Sproutling scholars again. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, the, the the image pauses, and the narrator steps on, and this is the start of darkness for history's greatest monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck yes. I, I, so uh, President Slater is going to roll up this contract. And he is going to slide it into his jacket and uh, kind of uh, sort of extend a hand out towards you and say, it was wonderful making this arrangement. More importantly, it's going to be wonderful for the world once, you know, the trains are complete and everyone can get to the tree faster. President Slater's eyebrow is going to go up. And he's just going to kind of smirk and say, I will see you soon then. And you hear a whistle go off. Uh, and we are going to cut over to Stranger and Lillian, who have two Bodaks coming at them right now. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I just saw the Bodak on, on the Roll20 like slide over and put, like, <laughs> like, a PowerPoint effect. Like, ah, I'm gonna get you. Hey, what you doing over here? L Lillian, do you sense that our world tendency has gone dark? <laughs> it's so funny. I was definitely thinking that this episode would end with me going back to Miss Killings and be like, how dare you fucking try to bribe me? I'm gonna kick your ass. Roll initiative, bitch. <laughs> Uh, and now I'm going to be like, hey, I mean, our, our new boss says hi. <laughs> very, very interesting for dynamics going forward. Definitely not what I expected, but very interesting. Man, I want to know what the tree thinks about this. <laughs> I had no idea <laughs> what to expect from this. Um, but yeah, Stranger and Lillian, you have two Bodax coming at you and they are aggressive. I think it is time to roll initiative. It's time okay, to roll okay. initiative. 21. 23. Wow. Uh, and 21, but you go first. So uh, we're going to put Hialeah. I'm going to put you next to your boyfriend. <laughs> uh, and it is uh, Lillian Stranger and then the Bodax. Lillian, you're up first. What does Faye do? Yeah, I think for like an opening move, I think that as my cantrip, I'm going to cast Plot Armor, which is Blade Ward, uh, until the end of my next turn, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage. Okay. 
And then I think that's all I can do because that takes an action. Yes, as I've learned a great many times playing Boulder's Gate 3 when I want Will to do <laughs> a useful spell and I accidentally tap Blade Ward instead and I'm like, ah, shit. You, you, can, you can just remove that. You can just keep that Eldritch Blast on there and you're good. <laughs> uh, all right. It would be a uh, stranger's turn then. Okay. I have a question. Um, so I have a spell called Conjure Animals. Uh, that'll let me sum- let me summon beasts of a certain challenge rating. Depending on the challenge rating, I can summon uh, one or more of them. It says I can command them just verbally with a free a- uh, no action required to do things and attack and stuff. Um, if I turn into a beast with druid shape, I can't speak. If I turn into the exact same kind of animal, can I still <laughs> command it? Sure, buddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't. I didn't make the game. Go for it. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know. Okay. Step one. Uh, I'm going to cast Conjure Animals, and I am going to summon a giant constrictor snake. Essentially, the. Uh, oh my god! <sighs> you fuck. <laughs> would, would you pres- prefer I summon a plesiosaurus? <laughs> <laughs> no, by all means, giant constrictor snake. Okay. Um, Stranger uh, takes out his uh, sickle and hooks it inside of his mouth into his own head. And there's like a small like cutting sound as he yanks out one of his own seeds and throws it on the ground. And it sprouts into this uh, giant um, uh, t- mass of vines and a, a pumpkin head with uh, thorns uh, gnashing uh, from it. Uh, and he's going to then command it to just attack the nearest one. Okay. All right, and it will constrict. A uh, twelve to hit. Yes. I believe that is a miss. Okay, so that misses. It whiffs. Fine. And then Stranger also turns into a giant snake. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right, so the two Bodax are going to sort of see themselves charged, like the area around them will sort of uh, start to radiate a dark necrotic energy as they activate their their uh, auras of annihilation. I was like, it couldn't be aura of annihilation, but it literally is. Uh, so they are going to activate their auras, and then they are going to uh, come up, and each one is going to attack... Uh, one of the giant snakes. So uh, we will start. Both those hit. These guys don't hit hard or hit lightly, sadly. Uh, and then uh, 19 damage to the summon. Okay. Uh, I have to do a saving or a con save here, I believe. Let me just see something because I have Warcaster, what that does. I can never remember how concentration spells work. Uh, advantage on constitution saving throws. Okay, that's fine. So. Yep. So you will pass. Uh, you do not uh, lose your concentration, but you are going to be directly next to these people. So it will be noted you will take five damage at the start of your turn. Okie dokie. And it's going to be back to Lillian. Yeah, I think I'm going to cast uh, my uh, uh, heckling cantrip, uh, the vicious mockery, at whichever... Uh, Bodak was attacking a uh, stranger specifically. And that is, let's see, that's a wisdom saving throw. All right. Five damage is good damage. I want to call attention then to a clock that you both can see in the room. It looks like it is coming very, very close to finishing. Um, you don't know exactly what will happen when that happens, but you know that there are only seconds left. Uh, to to stress a point, so I'll pass it to Stranger. Okay, uh, I have to take. I believe I have to do another Constitution saving throw here uh, because of the damage I'm taking. Mm-hmm. Eighteen, perfect. Uh, I will instruct the first snake to constrict uh, the target that just uh, got damaged. Uh, Twenty-two. That's a hit. Nineteen bludgeoning damage. Okie dokie. Uh, and then Stranger is going to bite the shit out of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, 19. 19 will hit. 
All right, nine damage. All right, then. That is going to be a good amount of damage. Uh, oops. How the fuck does Numlock still exist? It's so stupid. Yeah, so straight, like the, the one uh, pumpkin vine monster coils around uh, the Bodak and wraps it up, and Stranger just starts gnawing on its head. <laughs> Uh, can I get uh, quick HP checks for you and the giant boa constrictor? Uh, okay, so I I have taken... We both have the exact same amount of total HP. I've taken uh, less than the boa constrictor. He's taken 24. I've taken 22. Okay, how much do you have left? Uh, let's say I was not tracking it like that because I don't have an actual sheet here for it. 60 minus 22. Uh, 38, so he would have uh, 36. Okay. All right. So wait, you have 38 health total? You have 38 health left? 38 health left. Okay, gotcha. All right. So it is the Bodax turn. Uh, We're going to start with the one that is grappled, I believe. Uh, It's disadvantage to attack rolls. Yep. Uh, So they're going to make their attack 17. Yep. And then the other one is going to attack your constrictor. I guess actually both of these will be to your constrictor then because you decided to go for the one that was attacking you. So 21 against that one. Yep. Okay. How does 17 damage feel? Wow, that was actually significantly lower than it could have been. Uh, Yeah, you're, you're ripping it to pieces, but it's got 19 <laughs> health left. Okay. Uh, it'll be Lillian's turn then. Lillian, what are you going to do? Clock is ticking. I might use my last Bardic Inspiration to roll on that Tales from Beyond again and see if it can give me anything helpful for the, like, what what what, what little time we have left in this. Oh, Jesus. I just read what that is. And so the next time I'm able to use the uh, magical glowing seed that I summon, uh, it'll be a, it, like, who, whoever uses the uh, seed can spew fire from their mouth in a 30-foot cone. Jesus. <laughs> what, what does this mask look like then? Because you put on different masks as you, you cast different spells and such. Yeah, so let's see. Dragons. Breath. Pepper, I think it's just like a kind of pepper, like like a really like. Pro- I think I think what my reasoning was is that it was like one of the highest on the Scoville scale, and that they're like these little, like they look like they're crust crusty and crunched up little peppers. So it'd be like a mask that's like kind of like modeled after like a classic like red dragon that you would see, but like mm. it, it's floral if you look closely at it. Interesting. All right, that's awesome. Uh, so there's a seed somebody can take and shoot fire then? Yeah, and I could do that as an action on my next turn. All right. Uh, Stranger, it is your turn. Don't forget the two fields of annihilation. Okay. Uh, so that's the first one, and that's the second. Ooh, crit. Uh, okay, so let me just note down that damage. Uh, that snake is not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> uh he has i think seven health left or nine health left yeah okay okay um all right so first that snake is going to uh try to crush the one it's holding to death uh 18 18 will hit 19 damage describe how you take it out uh okay so um the the snake is just squishing it and it's like rolling up the last bits of toothpaste uh the bodax like weird gaping mouth uh just starts to gurgle out whatever little uh, like innards this be- creature has as it is uh crushed into nothing but paste yeah uh absolutely <laughs> holy shit uh what do you do with that what do you do with what you've grinded up you just spit it out i can't imagine it tastes good but you're also like a pumpkin snake so maybe it does <laughs> Uh, you know, it's fertilizer. It, it's like it's an undead. It's like a rotting corpse or whatever. It's fertilized. It's probably it, I uh, the the worm rubs it all over itself. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then stranger will uh grapple the other one. All right. Uh nine bad. 
Nine is not going to do it. The Bodak that is still alive is going to take its turn as it sees its friend get absolutely annihilated. It gets chewed up. You just see the Bodak go, Oh, it's okay, buddy. It happens to us all. It'll be all right. Uh, and then it's going to attack you, uh, stranger. Uh, not the snake, which has less health? No, it attacks you specifically. 18. Okay, yeah, it'll hit. All right, it is going to be... Whoop, almost did a much bigger number that I shouldn't type. <laughs> it is going to be 12 damage to you, stranger. Mm-hmm. Um, and as the Bodak notices that the snake is low, you see that it turns off its field of annihilation. All right, I'm still a snake. <laughs> You're still a snake. That's the best news I've ever heard. Uh, Lillian, it is your turn. You think that there is almost no time left on this clock. So if there's anything you want to do, you need to do it now. Each creature in the area of a 30-foot cone must make a dexterity saving throw and take fire damage equal to four rolls of bardic inspiration die or uh, half if they succeed on that uh, dexterity saving throw. Okay, so the Bodak, even though a creature of meat and sack, uh, actually rather dexterous, so let's see. 20! Okay, I think that does succeed. I think my like spell save DC is like 15. All right, so they will take half of uh, four times your bardic inspiration, which I think is a D8 at this point. I think it's a D8, yeah. So 4D8, and then we'll take half? Yeah. Let's see. 4D8. So half of Woo! 17. <laughs> All right, that is great damage, though, uh, as this creature sort of explodes and you see that, uh, like, their cloak catches fire. Uh, they are sort of uh, shifting around now as their body has uh, immolated a little bit and you've done some great damage. Just y yippee! <laughs> just, 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 like, as the fire, like, uh, finishes, like, blowing out, like, it kind of, like, burns up the mask with it in that use. Aw, that's such a fun detail. All right, stranger, there are the two of you left. There is no field of annihilation active right now, or aura of annihilation, I should say. Uh, so you will not take any static damage. Uh, okay. Um, well, I don't, I don't have any way to like eke out any extra damage, so I can only uh do what little bit I have left here. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have to attack him again as a big snake. Okay. Ah, uh, 10. Nah, that's not going to do it. All right. The Bodak is just going to uh, reach his hands out to you and the giant constrictor and is just going to kind of like gently soothe and rub you. And he's just going to say, it's okay, fellas. You're not alone. I'm here. It's okay. You'll be all right. Don't worry. Uh, and specifically is, is not going to attack you. Mm. At that point, you also hear a whistle blow. And then a calamity outside of this room. Just, uh, just, just that's, I, I, <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> um, the immediate concern has ended. Uh, Stranger is afraid to transform back because he's gonna have his health back and he thinks he might get mauled <laughs> if he does that. Um, sure. He is going to, like, nod his snake head at Lillian and then try to slither by through the break room to see what is happening to this calamity. Yeah, uh, you absolutely can do that, and I want to note. To Ilya, you can see what is happening through the window that looks out onto the floor of this factory. Uh, this whistle blows and then continues to blow and then suddenly gets off pitch. It gets 
uh, sort of like crackling. It, it, it like hits this 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 noise pitch that it shouldn't. You see the factories begin to, uh, or the the machinery start to like tumble and shake on this main floor, and people just start falling into them, almost on mass. And sort of there are. I don't know how to describe this, so I'm just going to do it how I know Austin will appreciate. There are explosions of gore and blood just shooting into the sky at this point. The the, the visual that you saw before when one person fell in, imagine it like, uh, you know, uh, 20 times as much as like a bunch of people are just being catastrophically destroyed by these machines, which are like coming off of the rails, essentially, as the very fabric of this world starts to like shift and crack and break. It's a spaghetti party. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. A stranger will look around for uh, his big tree friend and see, uh, he can't talk, but he's looking for her. Yeah, if I'm in the manager's office, um, I guess my question is, if this is just the uh, you know vision ending and we're leaving the tree, do I need to do anything? Do I think I'm in danger? Yeah, so I will simply note that like President Slater is sort of standing next to you and watching this happen. And he's looking out and he's saying, I don't presume to know everything, but it looks like our time here is come short. It's been an honor, but I have to admit I'm curious. How did someone as powerful as you end up, well, dead? President Slater kind of smiles and says, Everyone is mortal, young one. Do I think that, like, the exploding factory is related? It's like if he is the president of Slater, you know, technology or whatever, did his fucking factory blow up and kill him? Or do I, is there something I can roll to, like, intuit, like, to, from his facial expression? Is he looking at the, uh, you know, f- the machines and being like, dag, nub it, not again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, give me an insight check. I believe you have advantage on those. I do have advantage on those. I didn't know that was going to come in handy so much. Uh, that is 20. Yeah, with the 20, uh, you do not believe that this particular moment is meant to be emblematic of anything that happened in either lives of these individuals. This is simply the world kind of falling apart as it's reached short of a time limit. Uh, Slater himself does not seem to be moved in any direction. He has seen all of this gore and splatter. Uh, I want to paint the picture here. I don't know how else to describe it than this is the end of Fight Club, but instead of watching buildings come down, you're just watching blood drip from the ceiling, essentially, uh, over this gothic fucking factory falling apart. It's it's the Nickelodeon gack version of horror. <laughs> I turn to the president and I say, you met me at a very awesome time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the president uh, does not seem to act as though I will say this. You really feel like you got no answer to your, your concern about how he died. And he seems to be intentionally dodging that question. Yeah. Like uh, Lillian uh, before like Fay ran, like w- would like run out to check, like, like what was going on with like the whistle blowing up and stuff like would have probably just like wanted to like give give a last check on on uh pafo and his mom like just like just you you, you gonna be okay if if i go check what's going on i think i think we might be leaving here real soon and i don't want to leave you high and dry hanging like that um i will say at this point you see pofo rest his head on his uh, mother's chest and just kind of embrace her. Um, Not as though to say anything specifically, but in a way to give you a blessing that this is a moment he wants to share with her. Just, just, uh, Faye will have nothing else to say, just like nod and like just scramble out into blood apocalypse. Just a a scene from a Metalocalypse video. (laughs) Yes, uh, that is a great way to describe it. This is a Metalocalypse scene. (laughs) Okay. Um, So, because Stranger is built off of an Eladrin, uh, he has an ability called Fae Step. Um, uh, Which basically allows him uh, a 30-foot teleport. Um, And as this place is collapsing... 
he's going to look to uh, uh, Lillian uh, and say, actually, can I bring anyone else with this? I don't think I can. Uh, uh, transform out of his uh, snake form into his normal form and say, I think we should try to make our way to uh, Hylie. Um I don't know if you have a way to get there, but I do. D- just, uh, uh, I-, I will I will get out of this d- d- a- a- absolute maelstrom immediately. I'll, I'll figure something out. You, you-, you get there. Uh, and then Stranger will uh, use his face step. His lantern like flares briefly, and he's just engulfed in flames. And then another puff of fire uh, appears next to them. And technically, they have to make a a, a saving throw to not be scared of him. <laughs> so President Slater is just going to turn to you and say, "Shame, we couldn't have had time to talk, but I believe we will meet soon." Really because it seems like you haven't passed a proper check yet, at least with all of us. And it seems you've also skipped a line. I can't say anything to how your logistics work. All I can say is I am optimistic to the progress of our world. And with that, the world around you completely shatters. And you wake up inside of the banyan tree. I'd, I'd like to know, I think Lillian, like, in that last bit, was trying to also get to the manager's office, but just there is just a lot of gore and viscera. It, 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 it just, it, it, Faye didn't have any face step or magic teleportation spell. Just trying to get through that like a fucking <laughs> flood. Yeah. Uh, the first thing uh, a stranger does when he looks up, first he's going to look at the, I guess, the altar and see, like, what's on there now. Yeah, before it was initially a, a sack of uh, burlap sack of uh, and meat, and you see that the, there are strangler vines around that, and then placed atop of that seems to be, like, a long human bone that also has vines wrapped on top of it. <laughs> Can I identify what kind of bone this is? <laughs> sure, give me a medicine check. Eleven. Leg bone. Okay. Ah, uh, stranger don't got those, so that's why he's not f- that's familiar with it. Hylia picks up the sack and the bone and just kind of casually hands the sack uh, to stranger, probably just being like dividing labor. She is deliberately like, Oh, this is the president's leg bone. So I'm going to keep this, but she doesn't say any of that. She's just like, you carry this and I'll carry this. No big deal. Uh, is there another item? Like with the way we got the rabbit from the first arc, Mm -hmm. there are two objects laying on the, or, uh, sort of like standing in like floating, like a magnificent golden shine. Uh, there is one that is a burlap sack. That is sort of like almost like a burlap cloth, I guess you could say. I don't know how else to describe it other than the Reaper cloth item from Pokemon. Sure. If that makes sense, there is like this uh, kind of gross, necrotic looking cloth. And then the other item is a wrapped up scroll uh, that has like tiny burning green flames along the edges. Yeah, same thing. Uh, She grabs the scroll and then she uh, hands the burlap sack to Lillian, once again, casually, just like, okay, we're just share. You'll carry some stuff. I'll carry some stuff. Normal, regular. J- j- just like um, a- after Hylia, Hy- Hylia has uh, like grabbed all the things, like the first thing that Lillian's gonna say is like, so we should definitely tell Mox about that, right? We should like like c- like confer with him and like figure out what to do about the fact that somebody can just waltz right in here and put another bone on top of the burlap sack. Because that that was, like, I, I'll, I'll be honest, a, a shit show. Yes, completely inappropriate, a breach of protocol. So we're gonna have to do something about that. But that's part of the learning process, right? We got we're trying to make all this work better. Uh, so we're gonna look back on this and laugh. Remember that time someone put a bone in there? That was funny. <laughs> yes, we have much to discuss, and I believe we do need to speak to Miss Killings as well. Uh, Stranger's gonna look at her. He's assuming she's not here, right? So that's a very interesting question, uh, stranger. Uh, right now you are inside of the Banyan tree. There is no one else inside there with you than your vibe check team and these two items you've just grabbed. Um, but if you leave the Banyan tree, 
There are three individuals waiting outside for you. Okay, Stranger doesn't want to do that yet. He does want to try to confirm something. He's going to put the um, the Pofo's body part back onto the altar, and I guess just try to sense if the Banyan Tree like recognizes it as something that we could do a vibe check on still. So you uh, take the the sack and meat and everything like that, and you basically try to like put it back on the altar again. Yes, he, uh, he wants to try to figure out if it is even viable in theory that we could ju- we could give both of these people an actual check now. Uh, you do not see the tree react to it in any way. Um, so Stranger has not been angry really up to this point. He's been pretty like, like he's been annoyed at some things, um, but it's not like really gotten a rise out of him. He looks actually pretty fucking pissed at, at this revelation. Um, and he's going to start heading towards the, the, uh, uh, exit. If can he tell if Miss uh, Killings is outside of this place? Because that's going to change what he's about to do, <laughs> depending on that. So there are three individuals outside of the tree currently waiting for you. One of them is Speaker Mox. One of them is Miss Killings, and the third individual I would like uh, Lillian to describe. Oh, are we are we meeting what you could describe as a cactus leshy? <laughs> I'm adding a token in here. Yeah, Lillian, could you describe this individual, please? So this is a uh, stocky, like looking, uh, hu- like, ca- like, like almost humanoid, like woman who has like a uh, no hair, but like spikes coming out, like like cactus needles. So it's kind of like a stylish buzz cut almost. Uh, this is uh, mm-hmm. needles showing up. <laughs> Yeah, uh, these three individuals are are there, and the moment anyone comes out of the banyan tree, Needles is to start marching up towards the tree and say, "Out of the way! Out of the way, everybody! I'm here to make sure my best friend Lillian is okay. L- Lillian. Stand back! Stand back! <laughs> you don't want to get needled, there, suckers!" Lillian's like, or, like while like Stranger was like checking like on the vibe check thing, Lillian didn't catch that because Faye was already like, like running out of the tree to like go fetch Mox if he wasn't already here, and, and, and it's just like, d- d- just like, oh my, oh, okay, okay. First of all, don't li- needles. I'm right here. I'm fine. It's good to see you. You will not believe the shit I just saw. <laughs> Yeah, it looked like the bunch of no good punks are trying to mess with my best friend's job. And I'll suck every single one of you. And that goes for you too, woo strangers. And she points to Stranger and Hialeah. She's like, I don't know what you're up to, Father Time and Stranger Danger, but don't you ever mess with Lillian. Just don't oh, worry. So she told them my name. Are we still on for uh, fondue Tuesday, Needles? Yeah, I mean, yes, I think. Hold on, let me check my calendar. And she like looks at her hand, and there's like just writing on some of the needles. She's like, yeah, I think I can still fit it into my schedule. I want to talk to you about the cultures you've seen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Just don't, don't worry, Needles. Those two were messing with me. It was, um. oh my God, okay, she's here. All right. Uh, uh, the uh, Miss Killings over here uh, might have some. Uh, we might have some strong words. Uh, Mox, it, it, did you see what happened? Were you able to do anything about that while we were in there? I'm afraid that I showed up a bit too late to interfere with Miss Killings interrupting your vibe check of Pofo. Uh, I tried to see if I could remove the remains, but unfortunately the tree decided that wasn't going to be uh, allowed. Uh, I'd like to establish something here. The moment that um, Stranger sees Miss Killings as he's like heading out of the, the opening, right? Um, he uh, immediately casts Conjure Beasts, so he's flanked on both sides, by these uh, uh, grotesque, uh, like pumpkin wolves, like these these animalistic, uh, just uh, clearly meant to do nothing but uh, predate and kill. And he stares at her and goes, "Do you think this is a game? What what gives you the right useful tool?" 
This is so interesting. I thought this was going to be me at the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's like looking at an alternate uh, universe. So I, I will I will note that there is a the tiny palm Moranian dog. This is a dog with a long palm tree like neck uh, that is going to be standing next to Miss Killings and is barking at you aggressively. Uh, but Miss Killings herself seems very like calm and collected at the moment, and she says. I had a deadline to meet, and I'm not missing it due to incompetence. Yes, everyone has a deadline. Give me one reason why yours mattered more. Because if I fail to meet it, I lose everything, and I don't think it is fair. I fail to I... see how that's my problem. It was your problem when you took the job. The job is to check those in queue. We are doing that, and you've jumped the line and ruined it for Pofo. And ruined a valuable vibe for your own employer. I take full responsibility, everyone. Uh, you know, we should have checked with Mox because we learned from his killings that there had been a previous issue that had uh, uh, changed the queue, I believe you said. You had lost your spot or something. And so we didn't do our due diligence. That's on me. So I just want to say I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, stranger, do you accept my apology, buddy? Little guy? Absolutely not. Oh, he's so why, why are you... Just like we were just doing what what we had already been told to do, I I like like Miss Killings. Uh, to to be frank, was fairly rude when uh she called us up to her apartment, and I understand that like like this this uh, um Slater person like is important to you but like pofo is important to buck and like now i like i i barely know anything else about pofo except that except for maybe who like like a little bit more about who they were like before they died the first time but like that doesn't really like g give me a good sense of like who they were as a person like 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 what we can do to like help them integrate back when we bring them to the well. Like it's just all d muddled up with this uh d very scary factory man. Sure, I imagine a lot of complications arise in your work, as do in my work. But the simple fact of the matter is that everything I have is writing on this contract, and I don't particularly care if I have to push through other people to save it. You would all do the same in my spot. Well, guess what? I will judge him based off of what I have seen in there. And I saw a cold, uncaring factory environment that ground up employees and used them as currency to lubricate his machines. Tell me what of this deems him worthy of coming back. He has done more for this world than anyone else I know. And that entire city back there is a testament to it. Mountains crumble, kings die. Give me a reason. She doesn't have anything to say to that. Uh, Speaker Mox, like I said earlier, sorry we didn't sit, we didn't check with you before we went in. I just we were trying to get the job done. Uh, can you enlighten us as to the issue previously with Miss Killing's request? Yeah, so I have to take uh, responsibility for that. I uh, ran into a situation doing my checks that required me to reevaluate some stuff about the way I was doing things, which led me to pass it a torch to all y'all. I apologize. I've meant to talk to you more specifically about it, though. Right now, with all of this mixed company, might not be the best time to talk about what I need to tell y'all. Wow, extremely intriguing. Uh, vibe checkers, I don't know if you want to do anything else with uh, these folks. Do you want to retire to the decision chamber and uh, to you know confer and reach our verdicts? Stranger will just look to you and look to Miss Killings and then walk away towards the uh, decision chamber. 
<laughs> the decision chamber. This is we not an established new... location. What is Laundry the decision room. chamber? <laughs> Have we added like <laughs> a new like room like attached to the tree? <laughs> <laughs> she was just saying shit. I was hoping I, someone else would suggest something. I'm just trying to get us away from all these people. She uh, on the way out. She daps up needles. I'm going to take a D4 damage here. Uh, that's <laughs> from uh, <laughs> from that interaction. I'll catch you later. All right. Uh, did, you, did you finish that book? I need it back. Yeah, I'll catch you around father time. Just remember to take care of Lillian. And no, I haven't finished the book yet. I'm still doing stupid research about this stupid place for my stupid job and my stupid passions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Mox, you go make yourself comfortable. We'll come uh, talk about your scandalous secret uh, and killings. Uh, the dog looks hungry. Maybe maybe take them for a walk, and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, to the decision chamber. D- L- L- Lillian will like sidebar with needles for just a moment just like it- it's really great to see that you came over here to help out it sounds like maybe we're gonna sort things out and things will be okay so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give you a little hug now a little hug bring it in <laughs> okay just you know let me know if you need me to pop any of these punks for you I can give them an old one two send them into the new world you know like, I know my job as an anthropologist is to protect cultures, but I'll erase them and their entire family from history if they mess with you. <laughs> just, just look, I, I know, I know, I appreciate that so much. Just, just, just you're, you're not, just, just, just a, a, any popping of people will uh, happen if we need it to. But you, you don't worry, you're, you're, you're very smart and pretty head about it. You just got to go uh, to keep up with your with your work and stuff. All right, good. Just sometimes I want to make sure that I'm heard and my love is expressed in a healthy manner. Just you, you've been doing really good about that recently. I, 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 I just, I, I, I'm seeing it. I'm hearing it. I love it. J- j- just, I take one damage from hugging you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I love you, Lillian. I love you my too. My best friend. You too. I like to think the decision chamber is. Uh, when I lived in a hotel, there was like a part, you know, where you check in and there was like another uh, perpendicular area to that where you could like buy drinks and snacks. But I would just go there at like three in the morning and jump over the, you know, <laughs> over the uh, the desk, over the table and go back there and just uh, steal things. Oh, <laughs> Austin, your ski thief. <laughs> uh I like to think that we just go back there and we're just eating all the the food <laughs> that, that you know, you're supposed to pay for if you uh, you know come visit. Maybe I don't know if you, maybe we could just go in the walk-in freezer. I guess there's probably a kitchen. <laughs> I mean, whichever one you guys want to. I think you have you have free reign to sort of s- place yourself in this hotel. I was thinking it was a it was a laundry room personally. <laughs> yeah, we could do laundry. I got maybe I'm just hungry IRL. <laughs> <laughs> Stranger is eating his emergency candy corn supply as he he, he stress eats. <laughs> stress eating his candy corn. He's very angry. <laughs> they 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 fall they fall through his rib cage. <laughs> <laughs> L- L- it- <laughs> Lillian's not hungry. L- L- Lillian saw like a lot, a lot, j- just so much blood. Lost the fair appetite. Uh. All right, so we're in the steampunk laundry room, and there's a bunch of big uh, machines that are, you know, presumably run by some sort of magic. They're big, dangerous, crushing machines. Um, and uh, I guess Hialeah is eating a towel. <laughs> is that, Why? Are there any- Why are you eating a towel, Hialeah? We've got important things to do. Hungy? What? For towels? She didn't go up to a vending machine and get like a pot of dirt. I thought <laughs> Austin, when he described this character to me at the start of the season, he's like, yeah, I'm going to play a big smart nerd, you know, different than my usual big dumb idiot. And then you're like, no, Hylia <laughs> walks into the scene and starts eating towels. <laughs> I am just imagining that there's some uh, nutrients to be wrung from some sort of <laughs> special uh, fantasy towel. Oh, it's, sure. it's, a, it's a towel just made of seaweed. It's just it's, it's the constituent parts to sushi for you. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> D- L- Lillian wants us all to like get in a circle, like, like, it, like, it, it, and just like, fa- like, face Mox and be like, before we can decide anything. Well, Mox is not here. He's not here. I thought 
Is he not here? <laughs> that That is up to you. You guys decided to kind of leave, so I believe, I was under the impression you did not want anyone else to come along with you on this. Just, I, I um, like... Just out, just, just in that case, like I, I guess the first thing Lillian will say is just like, are we sure we don't want Mox for here? Like it sounded like, like he had like some like, it, like important information that would like at least like, like, give some context for why Miss Killings just did that. I mean, yeah, we definitely need to talk to Mox, but we have to be impartial jurors, and it seems like he has some sort of. Uh, existing enmity with Miss Killings, which could be a conflict of interest, and I just want to be uh, impartial and objective, so. It sounds to me like he had something occur that caused him to miss the allotted time, and then we took over the role, and her entry got missed, whatever. I, I, I guess that makes sense if he, he, he would affect the ruling. I just, I don't know, I don't... I'm all shaken up. As as I said to Miss Killings, I did not see a single thing within that that realm that indicated that Slater has any reason to be brought back. I read his own files on his own employees. There is nothing in that man that seems to care for another being. Let's uh, do first business first. So we went in to do POFO's vibe check. So let's take care of that before we go to the next uh, piece of business. I will say what I learned about Bodax is that they don't seem fully in control of their actions. I don't think there's anything wrong with liking death, being interested in death. But it seems like they aren't making conscious decisions and in that sense, I don't know that it's a good idea to let something like that come back. The moment Pofo was near a creature that was dying, I watched it immediately deactivate its ability to ki- uh, its necrotic aura and attempt to soothe the creature. That creature being me. <laughs> and, and, and you know, we, we didn't get much time with Pofo because of all of the, the issues that we will address, but you know, what I saw at least was somebody who cared a lot about the family that they had and the people that they lost in their lives. And then by all accounts, maybe there was something we missed someone who was just kind of like executed on site because there's, they're a scary looking cloth man. So Hylia didn't see that. So she actually asks for you all to explain what you saw to exchange information. And uh, I I want it to be clear that uh, Hylia doesn't lie about anything. She just leaves large sections of it out. She says, I met President Slater. He showed me his marvelous city. He's like a really big deal. He invents a lot of stuff. Seems pretty cool. Like she just gives that general overview and just like leaves a bunch of stuff out. Because in her mind, she's not a liar. Like she's not, she's like, oh, I, you know, that's my business. I, I don't have to share my business but uh so she leaves that stuff out and and so if you tell her about the interaction with the clerics she says like you know that that's that's really horrible but it also sounds like uh as creatures drawn to death uh they in a sense got what they wanted and seemed at peace with it being fine with death is not the same thing as inviting your own murder my people do not feel particularly angsty at the thought of their own demise does not mean I want someone to come bash my skull in. This is interesting because I thought with the scene with the uh, fear bug in the hospital, you two were like, oh, wow, this is sad, but it seems like they're ready to go. And now you're both <laughs> going the other way. So Austin is surprised. So so, uh, so to, to explain Stranger's position, he, he fully agrees with the idea that, yeah, everyone has a time to go. But there is a difference between it's my time to go and I just got murdered by uh, a priest because he didn't like my species. Just I I, I think that um that, that that like it was very unfair to to just see uh him get just like just executed like that. It was very upsetting, and I I feel like. Even if that's all we have to go off of, I feel like he should at least get a chance to come back and, like, you know, if it turns out that, like, he doesn't have control over, like, his necrotic aura or whatever, then, like, however he dies the next time, like, that'll be it, I guess, because I don't think you can come back. No, you can't come back a second time. And, like, you know, just give him a chance to either, like, prove that those clerics were full of shit or, uh, like, do something... 
that like not j j just like let lets him live his life a little more we have a few questions here one is it right for us to deny either of these people based off of a botched improper set of information and two put and two Hylia, you said to me one of your criteria is would the br bringing this person back improve the world in some way? Well, Pofo himself might not, but the answer to the question of can his kind be brought back is very valuable to many people, including those in line in queue right now. Well, I think if both of these people have kind of a a, a gray area to them, uh, because of the you know the situation where they both didn't get their own spotlight, they didn't get their own fair share of our attention. Uh, I think the correct moral thing to do would be to err on the side of uh, generosity and bring them both back. Even though I have previously stated, I actually don't think we should bring back Pofo. Uh, but I'm willing to acknowledge that neither of them got uh, the, the proper attention and due diligence. And I think in a case where it could go either way, uh, it's, you know, it's better to uh, be too kind than too cruel. I disagree, because you will send a message that what Miss Killings has done is something that can be allowed. So she doesn't own President Slater, and I don't like the precedent either that like the person who has died uh, is like, has their fate and whoever has their hands on the bones. You know, like what if you grave rob your worst enemy and then do something improper to disqualify them from being brought back? Not a, not a good slippery slope. Here's my compromise, stranger. Uh, let's bring back President Slater and figure out uh, some way to punish Miss Killings. Okay. Then Stranger would say this. Um, if Lillian will not break the tie, then my vote would be neither come back. It's just like, I feel, I feel like it's not very fair to, it, like, like every option we've got feels bad because Miss Killing shouldn't have skipped the line and like President Slater should have gotten a fair shake, and Pofo should have got a fair shake, and like it, like not bring back either of them, like bring back both of them. Just uh, I'm so I I'm so torn about this. I'm I I'm sorry. I'm not doing a very good uh, job at my job. Okay, so uh, we've had a lot of conversation happen here. There are a lot of different motivations kind of being uh, put about. I want to uh, kind of clearly state, I think, where some people lie uh, for the audience who maybe uh, need a refresher on a couple of things. Uh, Stranger uh, has an interest in bringing back Pofo because you want to see what happens for the sake of your culture. What happens when something that is undead is uh tried to be revived so that is a question that if you say no to both of them you will not get uh an answer to uh i will put out there that hialeah has made a deal with president slater to bring him back uh so she has a vested interest in wanting to do so she has until the end of the next arc to do so or she will explode so i just want to note that it is not something you have to do immediately this moment um, but that is the timeline that you are working with. And if this deal goes through, you will either have to uh, be duplicitous or you will have to accept that you will die soon. Uh, so I want to put that on the table if no is the answer. And I just want to clarify that it seems that Lillian is deeply, deeply uncomfortable with the idea of not bringing anyone back. But it seems like the most fair solution in Fair's mind. I'm so sorry that this is so hard. Just, just in in character, even Lillian says, like, I'm, 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 I'm sorry that I'm having such difficulty. I, I want to, I, I took on this position so that I could bring back as many people as I could, but 
I'm not sure if I'm given the proper tools to be able to make to, to be able to do that this time. I I think maybe we might have to cut our losses with these poor folks here. The last time we did this, I told you that sometimes you have to make a decision to cull a member of a vine to save the rest or risk them all to save one. Make your decision. Looks back at them, nods solemnly, and whispers, Fear Belug. <laughs> <laughs>